We'll pass upon volunteers uh, quite a bit during the actual week and a half that the festival happens because obviously when you have 30,000, 40,000 people coming to screenings, it's a lot of people. And so the volunteers you know, generally get divided up between the number of cinemas. Mm -hmm. And they help with everything, you know, from logistics to making sure that, you know, when audiences are let out, they know which way to go. And, uh, you know, again, it, it's something where we get a lot of volunteers to come back year after year because they really enjoy being part of the festival. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to not only be able to see some of the films, but get a bit more involved. Uh, and it can be a stepping stone. I think some of the people that work for the festival now originally started out as volunteers mm -hmm. for a few years when they were students and then started working for the festival eventually. So mm -hmm. uh, in, in addition, the festival, when we have screenings on particular topics, we try to put together panel discussions and debates. Mm -hmm. And so often we're getting a lot of help. Again, it's not strictly voluntary, but we have people that are giving their time to speak about particular issues after these films. And again, it's another way in which people could get more involved because of the festival, because mm -hmm. they find out about what other NGOs are doing around particular issues, whether it's something like Duha, the Czech Friends of the Earth, mm -hmm. uh, which pretty much we've worked with for several years now as far as our ecological and environmental programming. Mm -hmm. uh, or this year we're working with Transparency International, which you know is a very well-known international group looking at corruption and you know, transparency and accountability within government. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, each year we try to pull in these organizations, and again, it's another way in which regular people, whether it's students, journalists, activists, mm -hmm. uh, can find out who's doing what and how they could potentially get involved. I mean, again, I think with my, my background in human rights and also in, in educational work, mm -hmm. I mean, I think for me, I've had a goal of just wanting more and more people to become aware Mm -hmm. of the issues that are happening in the world because, you know, especially in the United States, sometimes it's amazing how much people don't know about what's going on in the rest of the world or how different conditions are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not that far from the United States or sometimes even within the United States. Sure. Uh, and so, I mean, I think that that would be my, my main uh, kind of mission mm -hmm. within, you know, the festival or even just in general mm -hmm. is that I want people to be engaged on uh, multiple levels with what's happening in the world and feel like they should get involved, help be part of the solution for some of these issues, whether it's poverty or discrimination or mm -hmm. massive human rights violations that have no place in the modern world. Mm -hmm. uh, but none of that will happen if people don't even know these things exist or that they're going on. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the Czech Republic, like any country, a lot of people get their news from tabloids and, you know, from kind of sensationalized news mm -hmm. that doesn't really push them to do much more than be afraid and to go out and buy the latest, uh, you know, item that is being promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the festival is, is a good way of really trying to bring a bunch of people together to talk about things, to get them to uh, maybe learn a bit more about an issue, and if they learn a little bit more, take that next step to getting involved in some other. Gladwell had a very kind of interesting critique of new media in the New Yorker, I think now it's probably about three months ago, uh, basically complaining that it was activism light, you know, that mm -hmm. it allowed people to feel like they were getting involved because they clicked the like button on Facebook. Uh, and that no matter how many people, you know, joined groups like Monks for Free Burma or something like that, mm -hmm. it didn't change the fact that the, you know, military junta crushed the protests and imprisoned thousands, killed mm -hmm untold number. Uh, but, you know, I read a very interesting kind of counter-argument to, to that from Patrick Meyer, who's one of the founders of Ushahidi, um, which is a great example of kind of new media being used to empower citizens. Uh, in that, you know, the civil rights movement, which people took extraordinary risks, right? You know, the lunch counter sit-ins, the protests, you know, where they knew that they could meet, you know, violent responses from police and People who, you know, were opposed to things changing in the South or other parts of the United States, uh, if they had these tools, there's no way they wouldn't be using them as well. And so, uh, the stuff with a lot of kind of new media or new options that are available online, I think the criticism is fair in that there's always been a lot of people that only want to get involved in a minimal way. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the people that are 
committed on a much deeper level or base their lives on doing this type of work, uh, these tools are very helpful and they do allow people to, one, break through one of the, the most kind of crippling things, which is feeling isolated, that you know you care about an issue that no one else around you cares about, mm -hmm. and the internet makes it possible for you to feel like you're part of a global world. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, for one, it's very good, especially for for issues that maybe aren't local. So, you know, if someone here saw what was happening in Iran or saw something that's happening in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, they don't have to feel like this is just something they're interested in and learning about, but they really can connect up with other people. Uh, and then, you know, Facebook and Twitter, to a lesser extent, uh, are still establishing themselves in the Czech Republic in certain ways, and people are figuring out ways to use them. Mm -hmm. uh, not that many people use Twitter, but Facebook has become an incredibly important thing for getting people to turn out to public events, mm -hmm. uh, protests, or otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, just like in you know, the States or in other countries, a lot of young people, they don't read the paper anymore. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the traditional mediums that people use to kind of get word out about a particular event happening or a protest or a festival, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're only using those methods, you're not reaching a lot of people, whereas with Facebook, we you know, find that we get a huge response sometimes to something that's happening in immediate response to an event that just took place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I think, you know, again, it's just another tool in the toolbox. It's, it's, sure. it's not a, a panacea, it's not a solution to everything, which uh, I think sometimes people want it to be, yeah. but at the same time, you know, it's... it's an important new way for us to reach people. It's an important new way to put pressure on dictators or people that are violating human rights. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, when it comes to injustice, you try to use every tool you can to fight against it. Right? Mm -hmm. So, new media and these kind of social networking tools mm -hmm. are, are great, but, you know, it's like anything. It all depends on how they're used and uh, what the ultimate goal being caught. I mean, I think, you know, the thing that's great about the European Union is that there's stuff like the Erasmus program, which allows students to live in other countries, learn other languages, uh, in a kind of immersion environment. And I think that, you know, first of all, you know, it's great when people have that impetus that they want to get involved and they want to change things. And so there's a tremendous range of possibilities. So they should really think about what area they want to work in, what area they feel like they have the most to offer. Um, and so, you know, once they take that first step and kind of narrow down the list, because it can be overwhelming, basically, the amount of options that, you know, if you want to volunteer. Uh, but, you know, I think also they should basically be willing to, I don't know, do things a little bit, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the best way to phrase it, is that they can't plan it all. I mean, I know, for instance, there's a lot of organizations that, try to package this stuff if they wanted to, say, get involved in an international NGO, they would basically work with a, a local organization that will find them, you know, an NGO in another country. Mm -hmm. And that's important, but the thing is they can do a lot of this stuff on their own, mm -hmm. uh, cut out the middleman, uh, possibly have a much more profound experience because it wouldn't be something that was so packaged. Mm -hmm. um, but there's never going to be a shortage of volunteering opportunities if people have a sincere interest and... Uh, you know, especially when people are younger, if they're students, they've got the time to kind of really explore these things. Uh, they they can travel. They have you know, a lot of options that might become more difficult as people get older and have families and uh, you know have professional commitments. That might make it a little bit more difficult for them to kind of drop things at a short notice and go somewhere. Right. Uh, and just to be open to those possibilities because you never know what might happen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when I went to Guatemala, I thought I was going for, you know, four months, and I ended up being there for two years, and I think that there's a number of people in the organization, like people in need, that they came, they thought maybe, okay, well, this will be my first job, and I'll be here for, you know, a year, and now they're here, you know, five years, six mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to make yourself open to it, sure. and, uh, you know, basically think about what you want to get out of life, what you want to get back to the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the nonprofit world does not necessarily pay as much as the private sector, but at the same time, there's a lot of other rewards mm -hmm. uh, that you know are just as meaningful, if not. Better.